and we are here live on the red carpet at the Oscar Grant 10th anniversary celebration of life and legacy. I'm excited about tonight's event, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the interviews. Thank you. I'm here with Miss Wanda Johnson, Oscar Grant's mother, and Miss Johnson, we just want to know, I know that some of the work that the Oscar Grant Foundation does is in bridging the gap between the police and the community and making sure that police for, policemen get more training. What are some other things that the foundation is doing so in the for, community? So for our youth, we have yearly scholarships that we give away, and so that's part of the reason why we're having the gala tonight. Awesome. We also do school supply drives every year, we adopt a school and we give them their school supplies um, and we have a tutoring program mm -hmm. and an AAU basketball program for our youth awesome. so we're working with our youth and one day we're hoping to have a building we will have a building awesome. where we can have computers and um, have our youth come in and teach them skills for living awesome. by giving them uh, teach them how to do job interviews fill out applications write, write checks mm -hmm. many of them don't know how so we want to be able to give them the tools that they need to be successful Absolutely. in this country. Absolutely, that's awesome. Thank you so much Thank for the you. work you're doing in the community and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here at the Oscar Grant 10th Annual Gala and I have the honor and privilege to be speaking with Reverend Jesse Jackson, a civil rights pioneer. And Mr. Jackson, I just want to know um, what strides can be made with law enforcement in bridging the gap between communities of color and the police force? That's a political issue. Alcohol, between 1880 and 1955,000 blacks were lynched without a conviction. Since we've had the right to vote, we've reduced those numbers. Only those who register to vote can serve on juries, for example. So that becomes having people in positions who have state's attorneys and, 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 and Attorney General's in position, that is a deterrent. But the madness of killing black people without without a terrorist must must stop. Absolutely. And, and really, Oscar's in the lineage of those who paid that price. He's in the lineage of, of Emmett Till, who was lynched, uh, uh, of Trayvon Martin, who was lynched. And so we, we, we fight to uphold the models of that legacy so as to remind other people that our struggle is still alive. Absolutely. And what can we do as a community to keep not only Oscar's grant, Oscar Grant's memory alive, but what can we do to further the movement to alleviate the mass killing? Keep of fighting Arnold. for political leaders who, in fact, will prosecute uh, and who will deter it from happening in the first place. Uh, too many guns and too many guns in the hands of wild people who seem to have a disregard for other people. And so often, the police who we need. Uh, uh, abuse their power because they often get away with an awful lot and then they get the blues who won't tell on each other and so we must fight back for the legacy of, 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 of Oscar Grant because he deserves it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking to us and you have a great evening. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Hi, I have the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Gwen Carr, who is Eric Gardner's mother. Yes. And Ms. Carr, I just yes. want to know, why is it important to be here tonight in um, recognition of Oscar Grant's 10th anniversary at this gala? Why is it important to be here? Uh, it's important because we must support each other. I've been supporting Wanda for four years, almost five years now, since the death of my son, Eric Garner, and she has been supporting me. And we support all mothers when we can, because we have to stand together. We can't fight this fight alone. We have to be as one. We understand each other. We've all lost children in tragic ways. And with that, we understand the pain, we understand the journey. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for being here, and yes. you have a lovely evening. Okay, and you too. Thank you. I'm here with Mr. John Burris, a well-known civil rights attorney in the Bay Area. And Mr. Burris, what I want to know is, um, what type of cases do you typically try? Well, I'm involved uh, essentially in a civil rights practice, mm -hmm. and 
most and all of my cases involve police misconduct. That is to say, the police engage in unconstitutional conduct uh, toward the black community, Hispanic community, or all communities, and I prosecute the police. I'm very much committed uh, to the issue that citizens and the black community ought to have their rights protected, and I'm in the business of protecting those rights. That's what I do. Awesome. Thank you. And what role do you feel law enforcement plays in bridging the gap between the distrust that um, communities of color have and the police? What role do you feel law well, enforcement plays? The police have a responsibility to reach out to the community uh, and to articulate the nature of their work, but more importantly, they have to treat the people with respect and not violate their constitutional rights. And if they did that on a consistent basis, the gap between the police and the community would decrease substantially. When people are falsely arrested or stopped and, and have their cars searched without a basis for it, it creates an amount of distrust. So the police, if they just act in a constitutional way, that is not violating people's rights. And then secondly, explain to the community uh, what type of uh, work that they do and why it's important to get the cooperation. Many crimes will get solved if the community and the police had a good working relationship. When the community doesn't trust the police, they don't help. And as a consequence of that, uh, a lot of crimes don't get solved that otherwise would be solved. Awesome. Thank you. And one last question. What is your relationship to the Oscar Grant Foundation? Well, first off, I was Oscar Grant's uh, family lawyer. I represented them uh, in connection with the case against the police. But secondly, I'm a strong supporter of, of Wanda Johnson and Cephas Johnson and, and the Oscar Grant Foundation. I feel like I helped birth it. Uh, through my work as a lawyer and, and also encouraging them to go forward. I, they do tremendous work in helping uh, communities and particularly families who also suffered as a consequence of police brutality and misconduct and so they become a real voice for those people who otherwise would not have a voice. And so I'm much proud of them. Awesome. Thank you so much for talking to us and enjoy your evening. No, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank I'm here with Judge Glenda Hatchett, and Judge, I want to know, how can we bridge the gap between um, youth of color and law enforcement? Well, I think that we have to, there's such distrust, and, and understandably so. But I think that the work of the foundation particularly has been very helpful to try to bridge that. But we have got to be more transparent from the police side. And then I think that we as a community have to be clear about what we're telling our young people about how to interact with the police. And uh, my dear, dear friend who uh, wrote this book, Bobby Kimbrough, wrote a book, Surviving the Stop, which I think is just amazingly helpful in terms of us understanding what we need to communicate. Uh, to our to our young people, but we've got a lot of work to do, and there has been such distrust and such anger on both sides of the equation. And I don't know if you know, I represented Philando Castile's family awesome. when he was killed. I still believe it was a murder mm -hmm. in uh, in Minnesota when right. his girlfriend live streamed it. Right. And so it's it's very difficult and it's very painful. But we've got to figure this out. Absolutely. And how can we overcome so some of those social injustices that face young yeah. men yes. and women yes. of color? Yes, of course. And you know my background is that right. I served for many years uh, as the chief judge of the juvenile court in, in Atlanta. It's one of the largest in the country. And what I know to be true is that we've got to even the playing field. We have got to pay attention to our, what's happening in our schools, how our children are being educated, what they're doing after school, because the largest incident of, of juvenile crime is that critical time between three and six, you know? And so when kids don't have those watchful eyes. Right. And so it's gonna take the faith-based community, it's gonna take government, it's gonna take community organizations to all come together so that we put a better foundation Absolutely. under our young people and that we raise up a strong, stronger new generation yes. of people, which is what we have to do. There's no quick fix to this. Mm -hmm. Uh, because we didn't get into the situation overnight, we're not going to get out of it overnight, but we cannot give up. Right. That's a great point that you made. I remember, I'm from the South, and we oh. have Mobile, Alabama. Okay, <laughs> all right. Oh, wonderful. So, wonderful. The, they had a saying at my church, you know, an idle mind is a devil's playground. Oh, absolutely. So you brought up a good point yes. that those critical hours between 3 and 6, 
that we have to find something for those children that are not engaged. We have to find a way to engage them. Right. And the other thing I will tell you is that I would all, you know, if someone had told me what's the, where is the highest incident of teenage pregnancy, it's not on the weekends. It's three to six. Wow. It's three to six. A lot of our children are largely latch key kids right and there are some no good guys out there frankly I'm just keeping it real um, who will say hey baby you know come on let me rock your world mm. um, and you know and then and then I tell faith-based leaders you cannot then look down on those girls absolutely because we haven't opened up enough of our churches our community centers to really take her in right. um, and the other thing I will tell you is that my pastor told me this when I first became a juvenile court judge. He met with a gang leader in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And the gang leader said, the way we're so successful is we can love them better than you can. Wow. I've never forgotten that. I have never forgotten that. Wow. And we have got to change that. We've got to Absolutely. change the paradigm. Absolutely. That's great. Thank you so much for talking to us, and you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank wonderful you. Wonderful to meet you. Nice meeting you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, I have Congresswoman Barbara Lee, and Ms. Lee, I just want to know, what are some things that law enforcement can do to bridge the gap between, um, just the gap between um, the distrust that communities of color have with the police force? I think it's very important that uh, police officers really understand the communities, and I support community policing, because when you have people in the community, police officers and others, to really relate to and get to know people, that really reduces the uh, anxiety and the unfortunate actions that take place sometimes, uh, which are deadly. Right. And so we also need uh, more cultural diversity and sensitivity training with police officers. Absolutely. It's essential that they understand who we are as a people and our circumstances and just get to know us. Absolutely. And so that's extremely important. But bottom line, we got to get these guns off the street too. Right. And we have to make sure that uh, Police officers don't, um, you know, understand how to uh, reduce the tensions before they shoot, right, right. because it's so sad in so many cases where the young African American men didn't even have a gun, right. and Absolutely. they shot and killed them because they were worried. And so, right. you know, being able to uh, do the violence prevention, hostility reduction, is so important. Awesome. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for talking to us. Okay. You have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. I have the pleasure of being here with Mr. Stephen Parker, the event coordinator for Oscar Grant's 10th Annual Gala. Yes, ma'am. And I just want to know, why is it important to be involved with the Oscar Grant Foundation and with this type of event? Well, you know, I, I think um, not just me, but everybody in our community needs to get involved with this type of event because Oscar actually started it kind of off, putting it in the public eye, and uh, we got too much of it going on. Last week I was at the Stefan Clark uh, Life and Legacy. Now this week I'm at Oscar's Life and Legacy, and it's just so much going on that we have to support uh, groups like the Oscar Rand Foundation to help them make sure that not another one of our young men are killed by police or at anybody's hands because murder is murder, whether it's by the police or by a, a private citizen. So that's why it's important. I think we definitely need to come out to these events, donate money to these events because they're helping inner city kids. They're teaching them how to do computer work. They're teaching them all the things they need. So that's very important for, the, for people to be a part of that. Awesome. And how can people um, donate or support the organization? Because this is a sold out event. It is. So no more tickets tonight. No more tickets. <laughs> but if they want to support the Oscar Grant Foundation, how can they do that? Absolutely. What you can do is go to OscarGrant.org and you can donate. Click the donate button. Give some money so that uh, this foundation and Wanda Johnson, Oscar's mother, can continue the activism and the work in the communities. I'm sure the foundation would appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking. My to pleasure. Me. Good and to meet you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Nice meeting you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.